Hi, I'm Paul the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm just going to cover the simple process of two-tone shading, starting off with a bit of theory and a tip using one of my old Photoshop actions, and then moving on to the kind of practical side of things with reverse painting. But before I carry on with the video, just wanted to remind everyone I've set up a Facebook group and there's now about 100 people on there. It's really good, everyone's sort of sharing ideas. And as an update to one of my previous videos where I made a scalloping tool out of a set square, a few people have done it and have, have sort of modified it and made it a bit better. So first off, my mate Omar sent me a text saying major scalloping tool works well, but the bolt bent. The um, guy Rick on the Facebook page had the same problem where the, the tool worked, but then the bolt bent and, and that was it. So he actually sort of made some modifications to it, which I can show you on the screen here. So it looks like he's bolted the ruler in place and he's added an extra nut onto the bolt, which has made it more sturdy. So that's not going to bend. So that's a really cool little tip there that, that he's kind of figured out. So anyone watching that video of making a set square, I'd certainly pop over to the Facebook page, have a look at what Rick's done to the tool to make it better. Um, yeah, and, and that was it really. But anyway, I'll crack on with the vid now. So I'm just going to start off in Photoshop and I'm going to go over a little bit of theory, but also a cheat of how you can figure out where to kind of start and stop with the two tones doing the shading. And what I'm going to be using is the convex type action that I wrote and provided free in a previous video called convex type. And what I'll do, I'll put a, a link to that at the top of the screen and there's a link in the description as well. And I'd recommend you watch that and at least download the action so that you can kind of use this technique. So what I'm looking at doing is creating one word using a font with a kind of 3D effect, not, not quite a drop shadow, but more kind of a block font. So what I'm going to do, press T and that will go to my type tool. And I'm going to use the font Comfort. Now this is a free font and I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So if I just click on it, it'll type this random Latin word, but then if I just type a word and as soon as I click on my arrow tool up here that lock that so you can kind of move it around so I'm just going to press control and T and then scale this up now a word like this it's going to be pretty easy to figure out how to kind of do two-tone shading on this and the way you'd figure it out is basically which solid faces are facing which way on all of the things that are facing to the right you would do the kind of light version of it and all of the things that are facing down you would do the dark version and that's pretty easy on any kind of lettering where it's squared off but it's not so easy if you're going to do it on a word that has got a lot of curves on it so if I change that to cool so it's not quite so clear now as to where you would start and finish that shading. It is on the L, it isn't on the other letters. Taking into account as well, not all lettering is going to be perfectly circular like this. So if I swap that for this font here, where you've got kind of long vertical parts of each letter, but you've still got that curvature from the C and on the O's as well. So I'm just going to show a little technique using my convex type action of how you can figure out where the kind of shading starts and ends. So what I'm going to do first is press T to go to the type tool and I'm just going to use an O and the font that I'm going to use for this another free font a really nice one actually called lemon milk but for now I'm just going to be using the O just to kind of demo this so let's drag this to the middle transform that up. So here's the O. It's still a type layer so it hasn't been rasterized and made into a pixel based layer yet. What I'm going to do is duplicate it and to do that you right click on the layer and go to duplicate layer and just go OK. Now you won't see anything's happened because all it's done is put an exact copy of that O on top of the other one. But for now what I'm going to do is just double click on the T part in this layer and now select it and allow and allow us to edit it. And I just I'm just going to change the color. So up here in the color, whatever color you want, but I'm just going to go to for a gray, just so it's different to the underlying layer. Click on this. So we've now got a gray O on top of a black O. So for now, I'm just going to hide the gray O, put using the little kind of eye tool on the side of the layer. 
Then all I'm going to do first is make sure I set the light to where I want, to, want it to be coming from. So if I double click on this O, I'm going to go to Bevel and Emboss. And this is already set where I want it to be, 45. But it's very likely, if you haven't set this before, when you open the Bevel and Emboss menu, your uh, angle of light will be 90 degrees. And what you want this at is 45 degrees. So set that at 45 click OK and then just click on and then just run the convex type action. Right, so that's made the O convex, but what I want to do now is just turn on the grey layer that we've made before. So that's our grey O and then all I need to do is select that layer, make sure the top tool is selected or you can press V on the keyboard to select that. And then now holding shift and using the arrows, let's just go up and across an equal amount. So if I press shift up five times and then across five times so you see this is mimicking that 3d effect but it's also showing us where we need to start and stop with the shading so it's just a handy little tip really because not everyone's kind of familiar with the kind of physics of light and how that works and on something like this this is pretty easy it's a pretty much a straight line right through but if you were going to be doing that on let's just close that and do it on the other letter O, you'll see the difference in placement where that is. So, so I'm just going to do the same thing, which is scale that up, duplicate this. I'm just going to turn this one black, just in case I can't remember if my convex type action changes it black, but for now just make sure it is just in case it don't work so run the convex type action on this show the gray O and then selecting that layer just do the same thing as before and you can see that's much different it's not a line that's going to meet in the middle like it was with the perfectly circular O's so a handy little tip just for knowing where to start and stop with the different shades on the kind of curved letters and that's all I'm going to do in Photoshop so just going to jump over into the kitchen now and get started on a panel Right, so I've prepared a small panel, and this is the one I'm going to be working on today. So a couple of angular letters and then three nice curved ones. Now all I need for this is two colours, and I'm going to go with a royal blue, just because there's going to be the same blue in the Puerto Rican flag. And I've got white, which when I've applied the first load of blue, then I'm going to mix it with white so that we've got the kind of lighter version of the colour. So. What I need for that is a couple of these, they're just the pipettes to get the paint out of the pots. It just saves pouring it because I only need a tiny bit for a panel this size. Um, as always, I always use a little palette uh, rather than mixing on a plate and that's because the paint stays kind of better in a, if it's in a puddle rather than if it's sort of spread across a plate because it can then sort of go off quite quickly and become tacky. Um, two brushes. I had to make this one myself, but I just needed a really fine brush for making sure that I can get the line sharp and then just want to fill it in. So I'm just going to change the camera angle now and then get started on the painting. So you might notice on this that the actual sort of 3D effect has got a sort of outline around it or it continues into the outline. And the way I'm going to work that is anything that's coming in from this angle is going to be the paler version and anything coming from here is going to be darker. So where these kind of shadows and highlight lines cut off, I'm going to follow that round with the outline as well. So let's get started with that. With these, it's always handy to kind of just snip a bit off the end because the paint's quite thick. Don't need that much, but let's pop that in there. And there's not a lot of paint in there, but that is plenty for what we're going to need. So I'm going to use my fine brush first and I'm going to use my mild stick as well because it just really does help. And I haven't got the steadiest hand as any of you watch my channel will know. So. Let's get started. Ooh. 
So I'm just going to use this to, to sort of put the, the fine bits in and then I'll use this sort of marginally thicker brush to fill it in. So upwards is what's going to be dark. So I start on the easier bits, and I say that, but I haven't done the best job of that, to be honest. Just haven't got a very steady hand, really. And that's pretty much why I am an amateur, not a professional. And that's looking good for those. So it's now getting these lines in in the right place on the curved letters. So I'm going to come round about here and I want to follow the same kind of angle as these really. So let's go here. And follow that, so that's going to come through to here. Bloody hell. Oh, my hands are bad. Something like that. Right, I'm pretty sure that's everything. So let's start by filling in some of the darker bits with the, with the thicker brush. And ah, that was what I'd said, is that these bits are going to be coming kind of in the same way. So if we can follow these two in the kind of outlines, that'll help us use that as a guide. What I've done there is gone out the lines which is always going to happen. So if that ever happens, while your paint's wet, all you need to do is get a Q-tip, dip it in white spirit. So, so that's been dipped in white spirit, doesn't need to be completely saturated. But then that bit where it's gone over the edge there, just kind of rub that, and that'll get rid of anything that sort of goes out of the lines. So I'm surprised I've got this many videos in without having to kind of share that tip yet, to be honest, because I use it all the time. Uh, might have just been a fluke. So using this brush, because it's quite thin and some of these outlines are thin, I can do a few of these bits, but then I'll move on to the kind of thicker brush. Okay, so I've left that to dry for a few hours, and then this is how that's come out. Not sure how well you can see that on there, but what I'm gonna do now, rather than just finish the video there, is I'll finish this piece, but it'll be using techniques that I've covered in previous videos. So I'll do it as a time-lapse, but I'll make sure that each time I do a different technique, I'll have a link flashing up in the top right, yeah, top right corner of the screen. Um, yeah, so just crack on and get this finished.
here's the finished piece. So overall, really happy with it. And I certainly think that the two-tone shading just makes those letters pop a bit more than if it was just a solid colour. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon. And please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.